Welcome, everyone, to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I am one of your hosts, Bryant, with my permanent guest and co-creator, Cami. Cami, welcome back. Thanks, Bryant. All right, everyone, you know how it goes here. We have a story. We're going to talk about uh, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. Very fun name to say and very fun person to talk about. We have been continuing our Halloween theme this year. We are talking about people of uh, notable uh, occultists, um, esoteric theosophy. These are fun words. We just talked about Nicholas Flamel last week, and we talked about John Dee the week before. Very fun episodes, and now we have our first uh, lady occultist. So that's even more fun. So Cammy's going to lead with a story. She's going to talk about Helena, and then I will uh, follow up with some facts about her and things like that. So without further ado, Cammy, take it away. Thanks, Ryan. So I, of course, used a Wikipedia article on Helena Blavatsky. I used an Atlas Obscura, The Unmasking of a 19th Century Occult Imposter by J. Barton Scott. Theosophy for Ward.com, the, uh, the Mahatmas, and the um, New York Times, The Medium with a Message by Edward Hauer. And I also, just to clarify a couple of things um, about theosophy for myself, but I, you know, I just want to quote them anyway, just in case you guys want to look it up. But it's um, anandgolap.net, and that's A N A N D G H O L A P.net. The origin of her powers was suspect, though she told a good story. She sought the occult since she was a teenager, leaving her family and traveling the globe in search of esoteric truths. She claimed to possess forbidden knowledge bestowed upon her from the far reaches of Tibet and the snowy wilderness of Quebec. And with this collected knowledge, she claimed she could commune with spirits. By the 1870s, she had established herself as a gifted medium who could conduct seances for a fee, and people were more than willing to pay. Seen as a fun pastime for most, Helena Blavatsky drew them in further and further until her seances transformed into something else. She created a new group called the Theosophical Society, and this group didn't bother with ghosts. They wanted the Mahatmas deeply spiritual men who have transcended and can walk through the astral plane. These men would deliver letters in fantastic and mystical ways, crossing the planes of existence to slip them in an open train window as it sped along his path. But not everyone believed in Madame Blavatsky's gifts or doctrine. Her confidant, Emma Colum, traveled from Cairo to help her in her work, but as soon as she arrived, Emma carved a place for herself beside Blavatsky, learning her secrets and eventually turning against her friend. She released her secret letters to Madras Christian College magazine, who promptly pum- published them to reveal Blavatsky as a fraud. For these letters contain the secrets of how she conducted her trickery, using her fellow theosophists to make apparitions appear and letters to be delivered. Blavatsky never recovered her reputation in New York, but her ideas of theosophy are still followed today by true believers. Mm. I was wondering how hardcore she kind of went on, like, the controversy, because everything I kind of saw was more so, like, accusations and things like that. Sure. I wonder wonder how, how, like, in-depth her, like, if it was, like, almost like a circus kind of thing. yeah, she. This is she's very interesting, and it, it's in, you know the last two uh, occultists we talked about were uh, a, a couple hundred years old uh, or from our time at least. Uh, one of them probably being over, maybe even alive still today. But um, Helena was uh, just she was born in 1831, so <clears throat> um, she died when she was 60. So she had a, a long and impactful life. Uh, she was born in Russia, if you couldn't tell from her name. And ever since the age of 11, she was starting to make waves, apparently, in this. So I definitely get vibes of um, uh, Rasputin from this, sure. you know, a Russian sort of... I, when was he around? That was the 1920s when he died, okay. I believe. I, um, they, they probably never crossed paths, but I'm sure he was aware of her. Yeah, he died in 1916. Yeah, uh, must have been, it, it, like... It, inspired you know something there for sure. sure i mean she died before he was probably even born um but yeah because he was he was 47 when he died so yeah that he he was born in the 1880s i think it was or the 1890s um no that's not right that's not math anyway uh <laughs> helena though really influential and she she traveled a lot um all over asia europe and north america 
and so uh, I, and I think that really differs from Rasputin. He was really just localized. Um, but she, she was. She, she did establish in 1875 the Theosophical Society in New York City. And, and you know, theosoph- or theo- uh, theosophy, meaning uh, it comes from the Greek words uh, theos, God, Sophia, wisdom. So it, it, this is something that's still very uh, prevalent today. And I, I, that kind of makes sense. Um, it, it's sort of a, you know, on the, on the heels of enlightenment and talking about the esoteric movement of, of kind of mixing, you know, bringing in discoveries of science and logic and reasoning into uh, the, the occult, religion, all sorts of things. And so just kind of like how we talked about with Flamel being uh, a very devout, or I, I don't know if devout's that word, he was a very involved French Catholic. Sure. But he was also, you know, an alchemist and, and that sort of thing. But for these people, uh, these sort of things were, went hand in hand, you know, for John Dee. Um, this, this sort of stuff went hand in hand for their work. And it seems like, but Helena really... She she made a name for herself. I mean, she she truly did. Um, she uh, so yeah, very gifted early on when she was eleven. It says she had a vision of a Mahatma, a master. Mahatma um, means um, great soul. It's it's an Indian term. You might have heard of Mahatma Gandhi, and it's it sort of it's sort of like sage is really the best way to say it. it's it's an honorific title. Kind of means sage. So apparently a, a, Mah- a Mahatma, a sage, kind of uh, spoke to her in a dream and gave her sort of instruction and went on from there. But it's no doubt, I mean, she created a lot of works that I'll talk about soon, and she was very involved. So I, it, whether or not she it was all controversy, I mean, she definitely contributed a lot to theosophy and had uh, very impactful, um, not just like in a negative way, uh, in, in religion, theosophy, science. Um, one thing it noted in my research, uh, she married several times, but none of her marriages lasted. And I can only imagine that, you know, you get in a fine, like, well, the sage in my head says that it's, you should do the dishes tonight. Um, I don't know. But uh, so that would, that would have been interesting to be married to someone who, you know, has a sage, a personal sage in their head. <laughs> um, so yeah, the Theosophical Society was really big. Um, she ended up actually opening up a, like a, a office of it in India. Um, and I believe it was shortly after that is where a lot of the controversy started to pile up. Um, she claimed that her teachings were based from ancient wisdom from Mahatmas, um, a group of spiritual masters, uh, you know, from like the Himalayas. Um, her most famous work, she had a lot of works, including uh, her letters. Um, she had the works Isis Unveiled and The Secret Doctrine. Um, these are the two most important works uh, of uh, hers and, and very important theosophical literature. Uh, she was one of the founders of the Theosophical Society, and these were kind of like their their basis. Um, they cover a range of topics, ancient history, religion, philosophy, science. In uh, Isis Unveiled, um, Blavatsky argues that all religions and spiritual tra- traditions share a common core of truth. Um, this kind of is a I, – I might be overreaching here. That's kind of a, a concept of Hinduism, um, and you know, she obviously studied a lot of Indian religion. Um, she had, I think, had her own sort of write-up on the Bhagavad Gita, which we talked about a little bit, a very important Hindu text. And so I think she sort of means like the, you know, all the religions, all those things, all these stories are, are, are connected in a lot of ways, and in very much ways, very much so that they are. Um, and uh, the teachings of Isis Unveiled um, go- goes more into that. It um, talks about things like the law of karma, um, human, uh, the, the universe um, having a single divine uh, absolute kind of being or entity doesn't really say specifically and that there's a, a hidden ancient wisdom tradition being passed through especially through reincarnation so those are sort of the ideas that she believes um, very similar to like esoteric uh, movements doesn't seem as like esoteric when we talked about it kind of seemed a little more stingy a little more elite kind of like only you know only certain people can be esoteric or, or hermetic but this one seems a little a little more open um, is what I see from theosophy I, I, I just from what I've been seeing well she so, needs a lot of people to pull off her scams I know, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> religious pyramid scheme. Um, to, I mean, she, that's she, she, it's basically what it was, <laughs> right? And it's yeah, it's interesting. You know, I I I think from like John D. and Flamel, there was a a sense of like you know with alchemy and things like that, you you kind of want to better things, and I think she mm-hmm. kind of did that, want to do that too, maybe more intellectually. But yeah, I mean, I guess you got to fund stuff on how somehow you can't just be a French scribe who owns land in Paris. Right. Um, we can't all do that. But uh, she died in 1891, but still, you know, the Theosophical Society is still active. Uh, her 
readings and or her writings are still um, studied today. Very big impact on understanding the occult and the paranormal. Uh, so yeah, very important. She she wrote an absolute ton. Um, the, the key to theosophy, Isis and Veil, the secret daughter in uh, my occult diary, the voice of silence. She wrote uh, the book, Bhagavad Gita, the book of devotion. She wrote in 1875. Um, tons of other things. Uh, you know, including her letters. So tons of stuff that you can find in the public domain right now because of her. Um, so yeah, that's um, essentially it. Uh, I I really liked how, again, yeah, so the the esoteric movements and like John D, Nicholas Fimmel, it seemed a little more elitist. This, this mm -hmm. seemed much more open. Uh, the, the society's goal um, is a, a, a study theosophy and to promote a, a universal brotherhood is what my notes kind of say. And so, um, I, you know, I'm not surprised that she, she went around, but it is kind of a bummer to hear that, you know, she had some haunted house level uh, <laughs> special effects. Yeah, it reminded me of, was it P.T. Barnum that we talked about? Oh, yeah. Or somebody, yeah, it reminds me a little bit of that. Like just, oh, here's yeah, the he, show he I'm going to put on for you. Yeah, he was a master at doing that stuff. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. That was a good episode. Um, that was a while ago. Um, yeah, he, he was an absolute propaganda, like master, but like it, it was, I don't know, you know, it, he, he wasn't on the heels of religion, if I remember right. It was, it was straight up just entertainment money. Right. Go on and so forth. So let me get this elephant and make it cross a bridge. <laughs> um, so yeah, I did look into the controversies a little bit, didn't have any like specific things, but, um, she, she did claim to have psychic abilities. I mean, if you're talking to Mahatmas, you, you'd have to be psychic. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were accusations of, of fraud and trickery. Um, investigations kind of showed they were true. Uh, she did actually, um, criticize some of the, uh, like theosophical societies blending of the Eastern and Western religions, um, she, I, I, I'm guessing she was more of an Eastern, which, uh, you know, um, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I came across was saying that at the time people were like a little bit fed up with, um, Christianity's particularly, but, um, just like those type of religions that I guess the Abrahamic religions, um, and people were kind of straying away from those and looking to a more Eastern like vibe for sure. you know, lack of and a better term. Yeah, you know, I, I guess, um, to, you know, I'll, I'll always bring up, uh, the Eastern Roman empire if I ever can, um, with Byzantium, um, you know, there was a huge schism between the Orthodox and the Catholic church. And so the East and West have been divided, uh, even like Christian Christianity has been divided for, um, several hundred years. And so it's no surprise that she would sort of have like, a she would be against them. So I'm not too surprised by that at all. Um, I don't really know, you know, I, I guess like one thing I didn't really see was if, if she w would have considered herself like a Christian. Um, I, I guess I didn't really see anything in my, I, I, she believes in one, one divine being, but I, I, sure. I don't know. I, I, I guess she, she would think of herself as a theosophist, really. She kind of more went on. That yeah. Way. I think um, she grew up Christian. Yeah. I would imagine she'd have to. Yeah. In 1830s Russia, you're, you're all Orthodox at that point, no matter what. Um, so the, yeah, that, but that, yeah, there was nothing in my work that kind of said specifically. So, but I, I taking the chance to go around to India. I mean, she, she, all of her books drew on elements of Hinduism, Buddhism, um, and Christianity, but as well as other traditions. So yeah, it, it, incredibly interesting. And I mean, let's, uh, let's point out, I mean, we're talking about a, a, a woman in the, uh, middle of the 19th century, you know, that's, I think another really important factor here is that she was actually able to do this in the first place. And so, uh, and it, it, it doesn't really dismay. She, she is incredibly important. Her works are really important. They're still viewed at today, especially in the society, but it's just kind of wild to think that a woman was able to, to do this in that time period. Shoot, you know, but well, um, that pretty much is everything I have on, uh, Miss Blavatsky. Um, Agreed. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Uh, Cami uh, was the one who orig originally found this. Uh, Artemis is on my keyboard. What are you doing? That's your tail. Uh, so everyone, thank you for joining Cami, Artemis, and okay. I. Uh, please let us know what you think. Um, we will. Uh, whoop. 
mystery with an IE, all one word, at gmail.com, or you can reach us at Facebook um, if you'd like. You can contact Cami and I. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any subjects for the coming months. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time. Oh! oh.